Good morning AV Kids, my name is Chrissy and I'm your AV Kids host this morning and again you'll be glad to know there's not a lot of me on the screen today, there's a little tiny bit of me and lots of everybody else. So we are going to start the morning in the same way that we do every AV Kids Sunday's morning, we are going to play a game. Now before we play the game I'm going to give you a bit of a clue, I'd like you to all stand with your arms outstretched, I'd like you to go to the side and swoop and swoop. This morning, we are going to be making aeroplanes. So, we are going to go straight over to Edward and Zachary and Alana, and they are going to talk to you about making paper aeroplanes this morning. Over to you guys. Good morning, Edward, Zachary, and Alana. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to the AV Kids game. This morning, we have got some very exciting options for you in terms of engineering skills and your best throwing skills. What we're going to be doing is seeing how far we can throw your homemade paper aeroplane. We've got some ideas for you that you may want to avail yourself of and we've got our tape measure out to measure the best distance and we've got a couple of rules that you'll need to keep to to make sure that it's all fair. So first of all, what you'll need is a piece of paper that you can fold into several folds to make your paper aeroplane. Alana and Zachary would give you a demonstration here. Okay. I've got my own personal favorite in terms of my uh, aeroplane design. So first of all, we'll sort ourselves out whilst you all get a piece of paper. Select your piece of paper. Oh, I'm not doing this hand. Mm, that's not mine. Which one's your bit, my dear? This is the ghost one. You select your bit of paper. So the idea of building a good paper aeroplane is to make sure that it's well balanced from side to side, from front to back, and from top to bottom. So when you throw your plane, you get a nice even, straight, level throw and it'll go as far as possible if it's not nose heavy or tail heavy. Now I'm going to show you a few tips and this is my favourite paper aeroplane design. I want the sure, octopus one. Okay. Octopus one. Can you, if you pull that one out then my dear. To make it go as far as possible you want to have as best a wingspan as you possibly can. So first Let's of all what we'll do is take your piece of paper, fold it in half long ways, a nice firm folds, that will make your paper aeroplane nice and sturdy. Today we're just doing a dot and then we might do all of them tomorrow. And I'm going to be doing a jet. So once you, this is just my design, you can do anything that you want, but if you want to, if you don't have much experience, this might be a, a good place to start. So once you've folded your piece of paper in half, unfold it back again, and then you want to just do two triangular folds, one like this, and then one on top of this one. Yeah, sure. I did, I did a fold so there. you're folding it twice, once like this, and then another fold like that. Okay. I will do, I will do if you're finding it tricky, get someone to help you. Like an adult or a teenager or a kid or someone who's really good at making paper airplanes. Um, can you help me? Yeah, sure. Now my, my repertoire of paper airplane designs is pretty limited. So that's, that's my, the jet is my best one. So then what you want to do is to repeat what you've done on that side on the other side of the paper. So fold it once. Can you help me? Yeah, help. sure. I'll let me fold this last piece and then I'll help you. Yeah. And then fold it again. 
so that the two sides look roughly the same. Let's do your one, Alana. Can I do the other one? Yeah, sure. And here's my paper aeroplane. Now I'm going to throw it. We need to wait until everyone's made their aeroplane first before we do the main competition. Now when we do the big throw, it's going to be the best of three. Because there might be some wind conditions that make it unfair on one throw. Well done. So then you want to... Yeah, sure. Fold it again. And then you can do the other side. Now once you've got that shape, when you fold it in half, you want to turn it round and then fold the wing all the way over until you've got about a centimetre of the fuselage, which is the bottom bit of the plane, showing, and then fold it over like that. Turn it over and do the same on the other side so it matches. Can you help me? Sure. Well done. So you're going to fold that in half. Okay, okay. Well done. And then fold it like that so you've got only about a centimetre of the fuselage showing. Well done. And then you fold that over and make it match on the other side. Okay. Now when you've done that, you can fold your wings back up. This isn't a great example because it's not exactly the same so it's going to be unbalanced. Yes. Yes. But once you've got that, you've got a nice fuselage. Now that will flap around a bit if you throw it exactly as it is. So what we need to do is fold a couple of wing edges, like they do on modern planes, real life planes, can you, can and fold them up me? like so. Can you help me? Yeah. And then the next bit is the, the exciting bit where you can find out how good your plane design actually is. Right, Zachary, are you ready with your plane? Yep, I'm ready, all right. Okay, so take your starting positions. Alana, do you want to stand behind? Are you ready? Three, two, one. Excellent, <laughs> right. Whee! So, best of three, Zachary, you have got 80, two metres 80. Yes. Alana, you've got three metres 20. Yes. And my amazing design, even though it went a bit wrong, five metres 20, okay? Do Let's I see. get more than Zachary? Yep, you do. So it's a best of three. Pick your, pick your designs up. Ready? Three, two, one. Excellent. Oh. That's just over three meters for both of us. My and the turn, last one. My turn. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh that's yes. a winner. So how many? Oh, thank you. You lost. So I got two twenty. That was a pretty poor show. Yeah. Four meters ten for Lana. That was amazing. Zachary, five meters fifty. Zachary Bone is the champion of the morning, closely followed up by Lana Bone. Well done. What was your score? We'd be really interested to hear. Thanks, guys. Thank you ever so much. Did you guys make your paper aeroplane? If you did, I would love to see a photo of it. Get your mums and dads to post it in the comments below. If you measured how far it flew, it would be great to know how far it flew to and we can have a bit of a competition, see who, whose plane flew the, fur, flew the furthest. Whose plane flew the furthest. So, the next thing we are going to do is we're going to worship Jesus together. Our worship this morning is being led by Kirsten and she is singing a song which is all about saying God is bigger than our problems. It's called Raise an Alleluia and it is about saying that whatever we face, 
whatever we come across, if we sing an alleluia over it, it's saying God is bigger and God's got it and he's in control. So let's sing that loud and strong in our homes this morning. Thank you, Kirsten. Over to you. Good morning, everyone. Hope you are well. We are going to have some worship. We're going to sing, I raise a hallelujah. So get your hallelujahs ready. Let's worship God. And Father, we pray that as we worship, that we will meet with you this morning. And I'm 
Father God, thank you that you are with us and thank you that whatever we are facing, wherever we are going this week, that you are with us and that you love us and you keep us safe. I thank you for that, Lord, in your son's name. Amen. Right, so we are going to go straight to our AV Kids August Challenge. Today's challenge is to decorate a pizza. I have got pepper, um, goat cheese, cheese, and mozzarella, ham, and um, tomato puree. Maybe you can do one of your own. Bye. Yummy pizza in my tummy. I'm looking forward to eating that pizza later with Naomi. Um, if you make a pizza today or over the next couple of days, do let us know on our AV Kids Facebook group or send us an email, avkidsashervineyard.org and I would love to see what pizzas you have been making, what toppings you've been putting on them. This morning's message bit is being brought to you by Frances and she is going to talk to you all about a man who had a peculiar diet. I wonder, have a listen and see if you can hear what funny things he used to eat. Morning AV kids, it's me again. I'm actually going to be reading out of Jesus' storybook Bible. I love this book uh, because it's so easy to understand some quite complicated things in the Bible. And today is all going, it's all about John the Baptist. And I think you'll realise why he was called John the Baptist by the time I finish the story. So it's called Heaven Breaks Through. About the same time Jesus was born, another baby was born. His name was John. And God had a very special job for him. John was going to get everyone ready for Jesus. And the day John was born, his dad knew God's promise to Abraham was coming true. God was sending the rescuer. It's not amazing. God was sending the rescuer. And he was so happy. He sang a song. So says John's dad. Because God loves us with a never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever love. Heaven is breaking through. He's sending us a light from heaven to shine on us like the sun, to shine on those who live in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. So John grew up 
Um, well, to tell you the truth, he was a bit unusual. Shall I show you a picture? Oh. He lived in the desert. He wore itchy, scratchy outfits made of camel hair. He had a big, big bushy beard and long, long scraggly hair. And here is the oddest of all. He only ate locusts, short for big, creepy, crunchy grasshoppers. Grasshoppers! Which he dipped in honey to disguise the taste. Let's have another look at that. He was an unusual man. But God sent John to tell his people something really important. Stop running away from God and run to him instead, John, John said. You need to be rescued. I have good news. The rescuer is coming. Make your hearts ready for him. Yes, get ready because your king is coming back for you. And great crowds listened to John. They were sorry they'd sinned and they wanted to stop running away from God. They wanted to be rescued. So John baptised them, which means he plunged them in and out of the water. It showed that they wanted to follow God and begin a new life. There. One day, John was baptising people in the Jordan River. As usual, when he looked up and saw a man walking down to the water's edge. God spoke quietly to John. This is the one. This is the one. John's heart leapt. This was the moment he'd been waiting for all his life. Look, John said, as Jesus came down into the water, but his voice came out as a whisper. He couldn't make it louder. It was all he could do to even speak. The Lamb of God, God's best Lamb, who takes away the sins of the world. Will you baptise me too? Jesus asked. Who am I, John asked, to baptise you? It's what God wants me to do, Jesus said. So John baptised Jesus. must have been amazing for John to see Jesus. Suddenly, it was as if someone had drawn back curtains in a dark room, as if heaven itself had opened, because a beautiful light broke through the clouds and shone down on Jesus, bathing him in gold. Beads of water glittered and sparkled like tiny diamonds in his hair. And a white dove flew down and gently rested on Jesus. And a voice came down from heaven. It was clear and strong and loud so everyone could hear. This is my own son and I love him. I am very pleased with him, God said. Listen to him. Heaven had broken through and the great rescue had begun. Oh my goodness. And there's Jesus being baptised. And we're going to hear more about this story later on. Did you hear what John used to eat? It was, did you hear? It was like grasshoppers dipped in honey. Now I don't even really like honey, but I think they probably would make those crunchy gross grasshoppers taste a bit more palatable. Thank you, Francis, for sharing the story of John this morning. The last thing we are going to do is we are going to pray together um, and the lovely Ruby is going to pray for us this morning. Over to you, Ruby. Hi, Avery Kids. I've been on holiday at a caravan and I hope you're all staying well. So today I'm going to pray for you and the rest of the Avery Kids group. Dear God, we hope everyone will have a good day. I had a great holiday just because you were right here. It has been wonderful. I hope everyone is staying healthy and well. We love you, hmm? God. Amen. Amen! Thank you.
Thank you, Ruby, and thank you guys for joining me this morning. Head on over to Ashford Vineyard online and continue on our worship over at Adult Church, and I would love to see you again soon. See you later. Bye.